Thank you very much. When the so-called performative turn in the arts of the 1960s appeared, it seemed that painting, and in particular figurative painting, has been carried finally to its grave. An end that has often been announced since the emergence of photography and later the emergence of abstraction. Therefore, it may come as a surprise that Gilles Deleuze, who has always criticized the different forms of representation, figuration, or narration, chooses Francis Bacon, a so-called figurative painter, to describe the power of painting. But for Deleuze, the performativity or the power of painting does not exist in the shift from figurative to abstract painting, but in a transfer from the visual dogma in which paintings have merely been to be seen into a haptic sensation. Haptic doesn't mean the tactile sense only, but in reference to the ancient Greek haptain or hapto, a general fleshly being touched. That is exactly the point where abstract painting fails, because it focuses on the pure form, creates a new and purely optical space. Abstract painting has indeed pure hands, but nevertheless no hands, as Deleuze claims with Peggy. There is also another way to remove the figurative, illustrative and narrative character of painting. And this way leads to the figural. This way is compared to abstraction, I quote Deleuze, another path, more direct and more sensible and it is the way Bacon's. Here the visual dogma is broken and the haptic is in the foreground. And with him, not longer the opposition between form and content, but force. No longer the figurative, but the figure and the figural. With the concept of the haptic, Deleuze introduces, in, in accordance to Bacon, key shifts that are linked extremely close to each other. As a mode of an artistic research, I will try to trace these crucial aspects, the haptic, the force and the figure, always very closely connected to this painting. The painting is starting point of thinking, and I invite you to perceive together with me the painting. Two large, rigid and luminous areas of color rose in the top half and brown in the lower one. The separation, not straight, but curved. In the center of the painting, a figure. The figure sits on a bar stool. It wears blue trousers, a white shirt, and black shoes. The shirt is widely open. The sleeves are rolled up. These elements are shown more detailed compared to the rest of the painting. The attitude of the figure, relaxed, but at the same time focused and a little bit tight. It has turned its head strongly to the left, a profile view. It has dark hair. Its face and hands blurred, deformed, unrecognizable. The figure is surrounded by a double oval. The one in the upper rose half of the picture is painted in orange and has the shape of a semi-oval. It reflects the separation of the colored areas. The one in the lower part of the image is kept in brown, orange and white and is positioned on the left side of the painting. These ovals frame the figure and give a contour to it. They allocate the figure to a specific, concrete and permanent place in the painting. But they also isolate the figure from the rest of the painting. The structure of the ovals finds a replication in the base of the bar stool and the mysterious, not really assignable st white stain next to it. The colored areas do not really seem to be behind the figure. They form less a background for it, but rather a kind of surrounding space. They adjoin the figure, they are next to it, a kind of absolute proximity, as Deleuze calls it. And that's exactly the point where we start to touch the concept of the haptic. 
The concept of the haptic is firstly introduced in the chapter The Smooth and Striated in a, in a Thousand Plateaus, and then also in the book on Bacon, The Logic of Sensation. Deleuze refers on Alois Riegel's idea of the development of the arts in the ancient times, because Riegel defines the Egyptian art as haptic. On the contrary to the art of the late Roman Empire and also the classical Greek art, in which the spectator is more or less strictly separated from the artistic object and in which depth and three-dimensionality is expressed by deep shadows, in ancient Egyptian art, seeing is understood similarly to touching. The central art form is the best relief. It refuses to three-dimensional perception, especially what concerns shadows and depth. Riegel calls this the close-range vision, and it has a haptic character. The relief figure is less seen, but rather touched with the eyes. Deleuze finds exactly this haptic character in the paintings of Bacon. Between the three basic elements in Bacon's painting, the structure, the contour, and the figure, that means between the monochrome color fields, the contour through the framing ovals, and the figure in the middle, there is a coexistence and barely any evidence of depth or three-dimensionality. But there is an own dynamic. The colored areas seem to move. They curl around the contour and imprison the figure. In fact, the figure seems to be trapped and a little bit lonely, an isolated body. But even the figure moves towards the material structure, the field of color. It has placed its right leg over the left and hooked it behind the framing. Nevertheless, its left leg hangs loosely over the framing, as you can see more detailed here. It is a kind of border crossing, an overrun of its fixed position in the painting. The figure wants to remove its isolation, wants to go out into space and maybe dissipate, dissipate in the fields of color. As an expression of this force of the figure, the framing starts to break, just a little bit, as you can see here. But the attention of the figure seems to be already directed to it, because it has turned its head sharply in this direction. A deformed body who wants to escape. What makes this becoming haptic possible is the contour. I quote Deleuze, the rings and its color as a place of interaction between material structure and figure. The contour is like a membrane through which the stubble exchange flows. Isolating and deforming at the same time, a movement of forces on one plane, no depth, similar to the best relief of Egyptian art. This results in a haptic vision, and it concerns all of the three main elements of painting that communicate and converge in the color. A haptic space and the haptic function of the eye. Volumes are created on the plane surface only through the various colors, while the optical space is constituted by the contrast of light and dark, the haptic space is constituted by the relative contrast of warm and cold, as well as, I quote Deleuze, the corresponding eccentric or concentric movement of expansion or contraction. Thus, there is no inside and outside, but only a continuous spatialization, a spatializing energy of color. Deleuze turns against the Newtonian concept of color and refers to the color theory of Goethe. We can always speak about the haptic when the view itself discovers a specific function of touch that distinguishes it significantly from its optical function. The painters paint with their eyes, I quote Deleuze, but only in so far as they touch with their eyes. Not only the eyes are important for the haptic, Deleuze also puts emphasis on the action of the hand. 
as I want to show in the next part, folks. A painting should not make form and content visible, but forces should become haptic. Therefore, forms and cliches have to be attacked in the act of painting. I quote Deleuze, In fact, it would be a mistake to think that the painter works on a white and virgin surface. The entire surface is already invested virtually with all kinds of cliches, which the painter will have to break with. An inherited image of thought that shapes ourself, that has to be attacked to provoke forces. The figure in the middle, its face and hands, blurred, deformed, unrecognizable. The face as a structured spatial organization is dismantled and it is the head beneath that emerges, the force of deformation. To provoke these forces, Bacon points out the action of the hand by introducing the chance in his act of painting. He throws paint on the canvas, spreads it with a branch, a spoke, a sponge or a rag. This, as Deleuze calls it, great technique of local scrubbing, attacks the subordination of the hand under the eye. It is no longer the eye that can define what the hand has to do, or as Deleuze puts it, the painter's hand intervenes in order to shake its own dependence and break up the sub sovereign optical organization. Therefore, the chance becomes for Bacon a decisive and inseparable element in the act of painting. It brings on the canvas, I quote Deleuze again, a breath of air from the chaos by breaking up the routine of painting. The hand acts and the eyes start to touch, and also by breaking up classical figurative painting. Not the connection between form and content is central, but the force that is created in the act of painting. What intervenes here is the diagram. The diagram decomposes cliches that pass through it but it does not create constant elementary units or aspects in order to assemble them again. The diagram is, as Deleuze calls it, an unbridled manual power. As such a power, I quote Deleuze again, the diagram dismantles the optical world, but at the same time it must be re-injected into the visual whole, where it introduces a properly haptic world and gives the eye a haptic function. The diagram must not occupy the whole painting. It must remain controlled, as well as spatially and temporally limited. Not every figurative form has to disappear, but the figure has to emerge from the diagram. And this leads me to the last part of my lecture, the figure and the figural. Despite, despite the breakup of clichés, the figure is not just anyone. It can be identified by the title of the painting. Study for portrait of Lucien Freud. And Lucien Freud is also a so-called figurative painter. It is an intense friendship that connects Bacon and Freud, one that has culminated in mutual portraying. While Bacon has often painted Freud, Freud has made only two portraits of Bacon. However, this portrait here is not a portrait. It is a study for a portrait, as the title shows us. Bacon hasn't started to paint the portrait and he never will start. Moreover, the study shows no representative relationship. Freud has been defaced. The figure does not refer to Freud himself or an object that it represents. It refers to, it is a sensation. And precisely here we can touch the figural. The figure must not get its value, its legitimation by something else, not by representing something different or even by telling a story. The special thing about the figure is that it is the body and not image of a three-dimensional body. What is painted is the body. I quote Deleuze, 
not in so far as it is represented as an object, but in so far as it is experienced as sustaining this sensation. The body does not come in the painting through printing or copying, but rather through a passage, a sensation. And a sensation is something that passes from one order to another, from one level to another. Herein, the haptic or figural, paint, figural painting differs quite significantly from the abstract and the figurative painting. According to Deleuze, they have the same problem. I quote Deleuze, they pass through the brain. They do not act directly upon the nervous system. They do not attain the sensation. They do not liberate the figure, all because they remain at one and the same level. They can implement transformations of form, but they cannot attain deformations of bodies. What Bacon tries to realize with the figure is a specific condition of the body, a process or an event of the body, the event of corporality on a plane. There is a significant change in state when a body comes on the surface. Painting is exactly this change in state and therefore a matter of high risk and with an uncertain outcome. The figurations or, of rules, reference systems or scientific reflections have made painting more certain. But at the same time, the specific power of painting gets lost and forgotten. If these rules and reference systems lose their obligation, the specific tension and improbability of painting can become visible, respectively haptic. This is precisely the claim that Deleuze raises in, according to, in accordance to Bacon. Deformation. A body does not come easily on a plane. It is not an easy process to become a figure. During that process it tears, it crumples, it melts. A sensation passes from one order to another and is finally present in the figure on the canvas. To sum up, we can say that Deleuze notes in accordance to the paintings of Bacon three key shifts. The visual dogma is transferred into a haptic one. There is a, key sh there is a shift in the classical distinction between form and content to form as force and figurative forms are transferred to a figure of sensation. And painting as sensation is, as Deleuze puts it, the master of deformations. Thank you. Thank you, Yuri. <coughs> Any questions, comments? Um, it's very interesting, I see that this thread of the sensuous of course, it's in the writings, but I think it's also um, very relevant to the practices that people other than, for example, Bacon uh, have. And I was really interested in this uh, form as force, mm -hmm. and um, also that you were, you were considering the painting also in the performative side, which is also one of your topics. So I have the, the question for me would really be, how do you think does the the shifting of planes or the changing of states that you mentioned mm -hmm. um, reflect in, let's say, in, in performance art, in the performative state, as opposed to, uh, let's say, an artifact, which the painting is. Um, I think that painting is very important for, for performance performances and the performance art, uh, because if we look at the happenings, uh, which uh, in the 1960s they have a very close connection to to paintings, and a lot of um, artists directly refer to paintings. Uh, for example, if we um, take uh, Hermann Nietzsche, he's he's um, he's a painter, but then he tried to break up painting by by doing a performance of painting. So he has his organ, um, Mysterien Theater, and there he really tries to open up painting to a performative art. And it's not just the, the artifact that we can see, we can be 
um, a, a part of of the process how how the painting develops. And another uh, example would be maybe um, Günther Bruce, uh, an Austrian artist. He is also a, um, a painter, and then he he left the canvas or something like that. Yeah, he left the, the picture, and he started to paint his own body. body. Um, so that's also uh, I think a very important. Uh, thing to leave the classical painting and uh, the artifact and especially for paintings I think this is very important because since the um, central perspective we have a very a very um, a very high distance between the painting or the artifact and the spectator and these are important forms to break this distance up. So Deleuze must have been aware of these actual painting and happenings why do you think did he focus on, on Bacon then? Yes, um, yeah, he explains it because uh, in, in his book on Bacon he mentions um, Jackson Pollock yeah. and there he says um, Pollock um, is different to Bacon because Pollock um, is, um, he calls it, he has um, the power of the manual. It is a manual space that is created by Pollock and Bacon creates a haptic space, and haptic means that the different objects are close uh, to each other, and we don't have um, a total breakup of cliches in the pictures and the paintings of Bacon. Um, we have, as I mentioned, the, the diagram is always um, focused on special elements. It is temporarily and spatial um, restricted. And in Pollock, here we, ha we don't have this. It is a kind of total chaos on the canvas. <laughs> so those are kind of two opposite poles. And of course there is... Opposite, two well, different... On, two di different. on different positions. Yeah. Yeah. Any comments, questions?